Hi, welcome to This Week in Ames. I'm Susan Guiazda. On today's show, we check in with the Ames Parks and Recreation Department. Today, my guest is Katie Kramer, Recreation Coordinator with the Parks and Recreation Department. Katie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, tell me a little bit about the position, Recreation Coordinator, and a little bit about what you do each day. And again, I think you're uh, somebody who was born and raised in Ames. I was born and raised here and went through the Parks and Rec programs as a child. Um, so it's really fun to kind of give back and see what things have changed and haven't changed um, since I did them as a child. Um, but my role is coordinating all the youth and adult um, athletic recreation programs. So um, doing all the hiring, training of staff, um, scheduling, buying all the equipment, all that kind of stuff. So keeps him pretty busy. <laughs> and uh, some of the staff that you use, uh, we take advantage of the student uh, pool Definitely. that we have here in Ames. Uh, you yourself were an athlete. Yes. And had you ever coached or done these classes when you were here? I, I did not, um, but I know with my with my degree, I actually was in kind of the fitness recreation area, um, got my coaching authorization, and I've had to teach a lot of the classes that we have have here um, and officiating and things like that. And it's a good way to to keep in the athletic environment for me. Um, I love coaching the kids, working with kids. It's just, they surprise you every day. Uh, so it's something really fun to work in and I'm glad it's an area that I've experienced. So what I find so interesting is that when you get the catalog or you look online, the classes change. They're not always the same classes and they sort of reflect trends um, and, and different um, interests in different sports. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We, um, each year, summer, spring, fall, winter, there's always kind of a different rotation that we go through um, with different brochures that we have. And we're also trying to look around um, other communities, what kind of special events are they doing, what's the new trend, um, you know, lacrosse is kind of coming big in some areas, so that's something that we are hopefully trying to look into. Um, you know, Ultimate Frisbee, we started that this year um, for our adult leagues, and it ran really well. Um, so we're trying to find some different avenues that aren't, you know, the regular for Parks and Rec every year, trying to find some different things to add in and keep it unique and, and keep it different to keep people coming back. So let's talk about kids for a little bit. One of the classes I think is always so interesting is those classes that let adults and kids kind of mm -hmm. learn together. Mm -hmm. Um, we call those our Start Smart classes, um, and they're really, they're a joy to watch, they're a joy to be a part of and teach. Um, the kids are for kids ages three to five, they come in with their parent. Um, we have some for basketball, flag football, soccer's our most popular one. Um, we run those on Saturday mornings, three classes, and they get full of about 12 kids each time. Um, and so we run through stations, just learning the very basic fundamentals of of the sport and even just working on things like balance and catching, throwing, things like that. And their parent gets the opportunity to work with them and learn with them. Um, they're still at the stage where it's hard for them to keep instruction or learn instruction from someone that's not their parent. Um, every time I walk up to them and say something, sometimes they get a little shy. Uh -huh. um, you know, so it's nice to have that parent there to help them evolve. And it's it's laid back enough that if a kid's just having a really bad day, you know, some of them leave um, just because it's a Saturday morning and some days they'll have a really good day, some days they'll have a bad day. So it's kind of laid back and that they can kind of move and flow how they need to flow based on how their kid is, is doing that day. And what's so helpful in those classes is that as a parent, you might not know all the rules mm -hmm. or you're not very familiar with the sport or you never played that sport. Yeah. This is a way that you can bring in that expertise um, from your staff. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we use, you know, word cues that, you know, ask them to work on this or, you know, here's a couple words to help them focus on this, um, you know, turning this direction to throw that way. Um, so little things like that can be a big, um, a big deal in getting those kids to finally get it and have that click for them. So it's a pretty cool opportunity. So if you have a parent that has never played soccer before, they can still participate oh, and bring their child? Or a, lot, a lot of them are kind of hesitant to because they don't know anything. Uh, but, you know, we give you everything that you need. And it's, it's so basic that we, you know, we go through all the stations, tell you exactly what you're doing. Um, you know, words to use, ways to direct their kids, and, and we really break it down for them, you know, using shapes and numbers and things on the wall um, to really get the kids' mind to focus around it as well. Um, so, you know, not hardly any knowledge at all for on a parent's side um, for them to get involved. So it's a great opportunity. So that's for uh, ages three to five. Mm -hmm. As you get a little bit older, maybe school age, 
lots of different offerings. As you said, they change. Um, we were coming up on January. Mm -hmm. What might uh, be some of the offerings in January? Uh, January, we start on the week of January 12th. Um, we have a kindergarten through second grade youth basketball program that's held at the community center. Um, we have one that is Monday, Mondays and Wednesdays from 3.50 to 4.50, and then Tuesday, Thursday um, from 4 to 5, and then a 5.15 to 6.15. Um, and it's called mini dribblers, little dunkers, and then big shooters. Um, and they're kind of based on skill level, so if you have a child that's never played before, you know, maybe you want to put them in that mini dribblers class class um, and then as they kind of get older and step up a little bit we increase the ball size just a little bit um, you know try to challenge them with the hoop height uh, but we do a lot of interactive games with the all the kids that are in there we scrimmage a little bit um, go through stations and again it's working the very basics of of the game you know shooting dribbling defense um, you know, through fun games and activities uh, for them to learn. And again, there we use the Iowa State students as instructors um, to hire on. So we usually have about three or four of those. So for those younger ages, are you separating? Are they co-ed or are they girls? Yep, okay. yep they're co-ed. Um, and we just kind of separate them out. Um, each day they might be with a different, a different coach, different station, um, you know, finding out who they work well with, kind of what group they work well with. Um, we try to mix it in as much as we can so that we don't have, you know, all the kids that are, when we, once, once we get scrimmage, we don't have all the kids that are always making the baskets and things like that. We try to mix it up so that everyone can, can be successful and so no one gets down on themselves. And at that age, do you see boys and girls playing differently or do they all pretty much? For the most part, they all pretty much um, play well together. Um, we, we do get fewer girls in the basketball, um, but they're never secluded or anything like that. They jump right in there uh, and, and play right there with the boys, so it's pretty cool. Uh, to see them do well, that. Well, some people might remember when the girls' rules were different than the boys' yes. rules. So now everybody's playing the same rules. <laughs> yep, yep, it's all the same. Um, and we, we try to get them to learn, start, start learning the rules of the game as well. Um, you know, where the out-of-bounds lines are, you know, what's a foul. It's the concept of a double dribble and a travel are still hard for them at that age. So um, once we get scrimmaging, uh, we use the instructors as um, referees and they'll stop a game, um, you know, and explain a double dribble or things like that, you know, to get the kids to learn so that it's not just a game and they're blowing the whistles and they have no idea what they're doing. So we, we do it as a learning process as well during those scrimmages. So. Another co-ed um, class offered that I just love is some of the tumbling and gymnastics mm -hmm. classes. Yep, yep, we have those again starting uh, January 17th. Um, offered many different levels. There we have a couple parent-child classes as well, um, one for gymnastics and one for dance. Um, and those fill up right away. They're, they're really popular classes. Um, it's a great way to get your kid in, get them moving, um, you know, gymnastics. You know, focusing on the balance is a huge thing, and just those gross motor skills, getting them moving, and then dance, just getting them up and moving um, and learning some different things. And then we offer anywhere from kids up to about 12 years old. Um, so lots of variety. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else, but lots of, lots of the ages, you know, a hip hop class, um, dance blast, you know, there's lots of different types of dance that we, that we do. So the dance classes, I know that there are some of them that have a recital, some mm -hmm. of them that don't. Is that the same with the gymnastics? Or? Yep, that'll be the same with gymnastics this year. Um, we'll have a recital on April 12th, I believe, um, which is Sunday. And uh, the little stars, little tumble bugs, and then tumble tykes and tumble tots. There are lower level gymnastics classes, so those are kids ages two to five, roughly, is that age group. Um, they usually don't participate in the recital, just, you know, it's kind of hard trying to get them into a routine um, to get them to do that. But all of our upper levels, gym one, gym two, intermediate, um, advanced, they will do um, a, a floor routine for our recital. We take down the mats in the auditorium and they go through a, um, a song. We have a theme and um, we work with dance as well with that theme. And, and they all do a different routine, get their costumes, things like that. So it's a really fun uh, thing for the kids to be involved in. They, they love recital time. So. Well, and I, what I like for the, from a parent perspective is that you can opt to not do a recital mm -hmm. if it, that just seems too much. Yep, yep. You can certainly just go through the session as a regular 11-week um, session. And if you're if you're not going to be there at the end of the recital or you don't want to participate in it, you know, we, we offer that. You don't have to do that as well. Katie, it sounds like you're super busy. I'm so glad you had a moment to stop by. Thank you. So if you want more information about fitness classes or any of the offerings from Ames Parks and Recreation for this January, go to the city website at cityofames.org. Look for the blue button that says Ames Parks and Recreation on it, or you can go directly to amesparkrec.org. Well, just a few reminders for your calendar. Remember, City Hall and most city offices will be closed on Thursday, December 25th, and Friday, December 26th. Also, will be closed again on New Year's Day, Thursday, January 1st, 2015. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching and tune in next week for This Week in Ames.